Cosmic Distance Ladder The Cosmic Distance Ladder, also known as the Extragalactic Distance Scale, is a series of methods used by astronomers to calculate the distances between celestial objects. Assume we are looking at two stars in the night sky and want to know which one is the farthest away from us. This is a difficult question to answer. For example, if two stars were at the same distance from us and had the same intrinsic luminosity, we would see the same brightness from them. But what if one of them was further away than the other? We would expect to see a difference in brightness. The more away a star is, the brighter it would look in the sky. And that is precisely what we see, seeming brightness. Because intrinsic luminosity provides us with a wealth of information about stars, their atmospheres, surface temperatures, and radius, it has been worthwhile to expend considerable effort in determining distances. Finally, when we look up at the sky, we see a two-dimensional world with no information regarding the third dimension. The stars that form constellations are generally separated in the depth dimension. Follow me on this voyage to learn more about this topic and to understand how astronomers measure distances in the cosmos, beginning with the astronomic unit and ending with the renowned Hubble's Law. So we now know that in order to comprehend the physics behind an astronomical occurrence, we must quantify the fundamental features of the system under observation. Many of these properties cannot be determined unless we know how far away the item is. Although we cannot determine many of the absolute properties of astronomical events without knowing their distance, we can compare their relative properties. For example, the stars in any galaxy other than our own are all around the same distance away from us. Thus, if studies of a neighboring galaxy show that all stars of a certain type have the same apparent brightness, we can conclude that this class of objects all have the same intrinsic luminosity. This feature can be used to calculate the relative distances to other galaxies if we can identify the same type of star in these galaxies and measure their apparent brightness, the ratio distances can be calculated directly from the ratio of apparent luminosity fluxes. Standard candles are sources with similar intrinsic luminosities that can be employed in this manner. Consider the following procedure. The distance to a nearby galaxy can be calculated by comparing the apparent brightness of its individual stars to that of similar stars in the Milky Way. The distance to a more distant galaxy whose individual stars cannot be resolved can then be calculated by comparing the properties of the galaxy as a whole to the properties of the nearby galaxies, and so on. This bootstrapping strategy has been nicknamed the Cosmic Distance Ladder, with each rung representing a bigger distance. But how do we set the Cosmic Distance Ladder in motion? We must first develop absolute ways for measuring absolute distances. So, first and foremost, estimators of absolute distance. As absolute distance estimators, we employ several simple geometric approaches. The trigonometric parallax is one of the methods available. Let's have a look at how the trigonometric parallax method works. The position from which we see the stars changes as the Earth circles around the Sun. As a result, their apparent directions shift slightly. This change in position can be estimated using right d, parsecs, equals 1 slash w, where w is half of the angle fluctuation of the star's location during the year, measured in arc seconds. The w angle is also known as parallax. Because this method is based on geometric principles, it is an absolute calibrator. We may determine the distance of our item by measuring the w angle. Problems emerge when we contemplate really distant stars for which we are unable to calculate the parallax because it is too slight and we lack the necessary instruments to measure that minor movement in position. Alpha Centauri has the largest known parallax of 0 foot.75, putting it at a distance of 1.3 pc and making it our nearest star. Other absolute methods are required to make sense of our accuracy in calibrating the distance ladder. If we know the radius of a star, for example, we may calculate its distance from us. The bottle wesseling method allows us to calculate the effective temperature of a star based on its optical color or spectral type. 
L equals C, R squared, T to the power of 4, then gives its intrinsic luminosity. We may calculate the star's distance from us directly by comparing its apparent magnitude to its absolute magnitude. Unfortunately, measuring stellar radii directly is not frequently possible, but we can get around this by examining variable stars like Cepheids and RR Lyrae, second step. Doppler shifts in the spectra of such a variable star vary cyclically with the same period as the star's brightness variations. These variations occur because the star's atmosphere is unstable and undergoes global expansion and contraction, causing the star size to change. Studies revealed a clear association between the star's period and its intrinsic luminosity, P is proportional to L, implying that the brighter the star, the longer the period. So, now that we know the intrinsic luminosity of the star, we can utilize the distance module to calculate the star's distance. A similar method is utilized with our R. Lyrae stars, which are old population stars with shorter periods and are fainter than Cepheids. We can estimate the distance of approximately Cepheids and R. R. Lyrae are referred to as primary estimators in order to separate them from absolute estimators. We are now ready to take the next step. The third stage is to use secondary distance estimators. The Type 1 supernovae are the most efficient secondary estimators that astronomers employ to determine the distance of distant objects. What exactly is a Type 1 supernova? A Type 1a supernova is a supernova that happens in binary systems, two stars orbiting each other, one of which is a white dwarf. The other star could be anything from a massive star to a tiny white dwarf. Carbon oxygen white dwarfs with a low rate of rotation are physically constrained to less than 1.44 solar masses. They rekindle and, in certain cases, produce a supernova explosion once they reach this critical mass. Because of the set critical mass at which a white dwarf would explode, supernovae of type want to have a reasonably stable peak luminosity. Because of their continuous peak luminosity, these explosions can be used as measuring candles to determine the distance to their host galaxies. The visual magnitude of a Type 1 supernova as seen from Earth indicates its distance from Earth. But how do we go about it? Astronomers discovered that the luminosity peak for almost all Type 1 supernovae at a known distance is the identical, allowing us to estimate their distance using the distance module. Type 1 supernovae yield distance estimates for objects with masses greater than 100 megaparsecs, making them one of the most powerful distance estimators. Of course, we haven't exhausted all of the secondary distance estimators. For example, we can argue that some empirical laws, Tully-Fisher relation, Faber-Jackson relation, exist that can provide us with the distance between two objects. However, we needed to discuss Type IA supernovae since they are extremely bright and aid astronomers in determining the Hubble constant. In reality, when we reach the top of the distance ladder, we realize that there is a relationship between an object's spectral line shift and its distance from us. This critical cosmological result was initially acquired without adequate absolute distance calibration. Edwin Hubble, an American astronomer, was the first to seek to comprehend how things work. Following Slipher's discovery in 1914 that the characteristic lines in the spectra of almost all galaxies are systematically shifted toward the red, Hubble investigated the relationship between the distance d to a galaxy and the amount that an intrinsic wavelength line is shifted in its spectrum. Despite the fact that George Lemaitre theorized and observed it two years earlier, Hubble presented evidence that the recessional velocity of a galaxy grows with its distance from the Earth, a phenomenon now known as Hubble's Law. The hubble lemaitre Law suggests that the universe is expanding, and the recession of galaxies causes redshift via the standard Doppler formula. Let us write out Hubble's law, V equals H of D, where V is the rate of separation and H of zero is the Hubble constant. Running the clock backwards, we can observe that all galaxies must have started from the same point one Hubble time, the inverse of H of zero minus one equals D slash V ago. This is how we established cosmology by creating a Big Bang at a specific point in the past, when the entire universe was contained in a small volume. 
That is why determining a valid value of the Hubble constant is critical, it provides us an estimate of the age of the cosmos. We put forth a lot of work to determine H0, and the accepted value is now somewhere between 65 and 75 kilometers per second per MPC, albeit this is still an approximation. Because of their brightness, Type 1 supernovae can let us cover very large distances and so get a better approximation of the Hubble constant. It should also be noted that the further we travel, the less error we have on the V value. That is why astronomers are interested in Type 1 a supernovae. We traveled a long distance through the universe today, and we are pleased. However, we would be delighted if you found this movie informative, we hope so every time. This video has come to an end, thank you for tuning in everyone and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.